Welcome to the Power of Lifting podcast. I'm Eric Cafferty, owner of the Mecca Gym. I am a strength and conditioning coach and a contest prep specialist. The focus of this podcast is to dive into the mindset and the drive of people who have done incredible things with their lives. Ready to rock and roll. Okay. All right. Welcome. Welcome, everyone. Hunter, how are you doing today, buddy? Oh, I'm good. Good. <laughs> I'm great, actually. Between uh, technical difficulties and the height of this chair, <laughs> I'm doing great. Good. Better now. Better now. So today we have a, a very special and dear guest to the Mecca family. Yes. This is our... Um, our first female we have on this podcast as well. It's about wow. time. It we, is about time. Yeah, we we try to not be try to not be sexist. Here we go. We're gonna adjust. We're gonna adjust you a little bit. Derek, you're hiding behind the mic. Am I? Yeah. Okay. Is that better, Steven? It's not staying. All right. There we go. Better? Am I, am I not behind my mic anymore? Is that better? There you go. Yeah. Can you hear me? Okay, good. So first first fem- female guest on the podcast. And um, anyway, so to jump jump right into it, Cheryl. Hello. Hello, hello. Um, tell us a little bit about you. Um, you know, you've been a client of mine for how long now? Oh, man. Seven years. Seven years. Seven years. Wow. wow. Yeah. A yeah. devout figure competitor. Many, many, many championships won. Many uh, pictures on the wall. Many, many pictures on the wall. Yeah, many, too. many tiaras. <laughs> many tiaras. <There> many <laughs> tiaras. Uh, many inspirational awards. But um, now you, you know, live in uh, the local area. You're an instructor at Orange Theory Fitness. Tell us a little bit about that. What, what got you into fitness? Um, gosh, way back in junior college, <laughs> I had a boyfriend that said, why are you taking a nap? Go to the gym. And honestly, that's when it started. Oh, man. I know. <laughs> Simple, I know. Straight bully. I really know. So I started going to the gym and then I saw the aerobic instructors. This is back step aerobic days, maybe even before step aerobics. Was it like the onesies wow. with the thong? Oh, yes. Oh, that was part yes. of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We need to bring those back. It and probably should. then I decided to be an instructor. And my first class I taught, I thought I was going to die after the warm-up. Seriously. That you taught? Yes. Oh, I would oh practice boy. in the garage at my nanny job for the summer. And then I'd show up that yes. night, three hours of practicing the same routine. And after the warm-up in front of people, I thought I was going to die. And it was like an aerobics dance. <laughs> yes. Like Richard yes. Simmons. Yes. 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 Yeah. Totally. That's who I totally. picture when you thought totally. about yeah. so, so how long ago was that? That was 1985. Yeah. Right. Maybe yes. 87. Maybe 87. That's, oh. yeah. That is spectacular. Yeah. That's when it all began. That's awesome. That's so so tell us, uh, how, how did it progress from there? You were an aerobics instructor. And then went away to college and saw older ladies, like probably my age now, doing it. I thought, ooh, there's a good way to stay in shape. So then I got a job then and continued. Then I graduated college, got a real professional career, still taught step aerobics at 5 a.m. Yes. I've always been the morning person. No, of that. Yeah. Good for you. <laughs> then we moved to Hawaii and I thought, well, I don't want to work out indoors. So I quit for a while. And uh, we moved here, gosh, 18 years ago uh-huh. and uh, had a, a new job. I was a Little Angels photography yes. business owner. And then was done with that and thought, I want to get back into fitness. And when Axiom opened, I got my certification again, started teaching there, and then yeah. I learned about Orange Theory. That's and, right. Yeah. So when I met you, you were teaching at Axiom, just doing a few I was, classes here and there. Yeah, yeah, very little, just like two. And I would go to the gym a lot, but I didn't lift, thought I lifted heavy, thought I lifted the right way, but no. no. Yeah, no, it's yeah. been, it's been. Yeah. It's still a huge journey. No. It, I mean, it always is, and for everybody. Mm-hmm. And you know, we we don't always you know start off doing things perfect. Even though being involved in fitness for a long time, you know, there's still there's different types of fitness. You know, I'm certainly not going to be going and instructing an Orange Theory class. Mm-hmm. I'd I'd probably get booed off the stage. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, I can sure yeah. teach a squat, man. Yes, that's right. People so, have their strengths. That's right. Yes. Um, so yeah, I guess tell us a little bit about, uh, 
you know, how, how you enjoy, you know, group fitness, things like that. I love group fitness and I love having a personal trainer because I need someone to motivate me <laughs> and group fitness. I love that you get to motivate a lot of people at the same time right. and uh, watching people, watching them improve like emotionally, physically, mentally getting stronger. And it's just, it's very gratifying. Yeah. And you say on your, uh, your podcast question that we send out, you're basically a cheerleader. Totally. <laughs> I am a cheerleader. Well, which listen, is, I, I've taken a class or two. Yes, you sure. have. Me and my wife. Which, and she which is, is how I met you, by that, the way. That's yes. right. That's right. I We're all together your wife that's right. to him. because of Cheryl. That's right. Yes. Oh, We're all here goodness. because of Cheryl. Yes. That's true. Thank you, Cheryl. <laughs> You're welcome. You have literally world. changed our lives. I'm glad. That's true. Through I'm him glad. and anyway, it's been incredible. But yes, that's amazing. Yeah, isn't that awesome? Small world. Anyway, yeah. so yeah, and you've done, man, how many how many shows have, have you done? I think at I've this done point? about 13. Thir yeah, I was going to say, it's, about it's getting up there. That is a, that's a lot of shows. And I was so, going to do one. It was supposed yeah. to be oh, really? yeah. do one, check it off the list. Oh, like I just want to see what I can do. Yeah. Make it happen. Yeah. And then, and then that so translates into, yeah. you know, she's won quite a few master's titles and That's amazing. just crushing it. When you started, you were, what, 46? My first one was 46, and they didn't have 45 and over, so I had to drop down to 35 and over. Uh, yeah. So there wasn't oh. anybody in the older category. That's interesting. What was the, the drive? Because from going from, like, group class, they're just a different kind. I, I think a Very totally different, different kind of fitness. So yeah. it was like, you know what? I think I want to try that. It's always kind of been in the back of my head, but I also thought um, I was nervous about like what people would think and say. Mm. And um, I like you think I think I thought of it as people like she's not that good, she can't do that. <laughs> and so I didn't really want to tell anybody. Oh. And uh, my sister-in-law did one uh, right when she turned forty, and so that was like kind of my inspiration. Like, okay, if she can do one. I think I can do one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, I didn't tell anybody, hardly anybody. And and it was interesting in the beginning. People were very snotty and um, rude about it. Yeah. Like some really not nice comments towards you specifically. Yeah. Like what? Like what good are you doing? friends. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's yeah. really you know in my experience and you know obviously coach a ton of people and whatnot, but. Um, I think there's a couple of main reactions that you get as a first time competitor. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that's certainly one of them. And it's really disappointing. You know, people should be, I think more along the lines of, Hey, good for you. Like, you know, this is something that a lot of people are doing because they want to be healthy, but they, they see that they need a, an outcome oriented goal, which, mm. you know, that's, I think that comes just from things in our society. You know, they're like, I need, I need that kind of a goal. Right. They don't really understand how the you know process oriented goals work and they haven't really been taught and they just see competition as like well if i you know commit to doing that and i pay a trainer and xyz then then i'll get there you know and with a lot of people that set themselves up like that that kind of sets yourself up to not do so great at competitions just fyi to those out there <laughs> but it is a way that a lot of people get their foot in the door. Mm -hmm. um, and then that's a way that a lot of people really do find passion about, you know, just fitness in general, but, you know, especially competing. Right. And then you have people when it's your first time and, you know, a lot of us that have competed went through the similar experiences when you start, you know, you have people that are really super negative, like pff, kind of scoff at you. Like, why would you do exactly. that? You know, yeah. like, like, oh, you think you're some, you know, now you're going to go be some fitness model or, oh, you think, you know, yeah, like you're not that big, like, you know, whatever, mm -hmm. you can't do that or, you know, just kind of, and, and I think a lot of that kind of comes from their insecurity, you know, they kind of, you, you even see that from spouses, you know, a lot, I've had a lot of women that go to get in crazy good shape and their husbands are like holding them back big time, trying to sabotage them, telling them that they shouldn't do it. And it's like, bro. You're literally like your wife just signed up to become a supermodel and yeah. get super hot for you. What are you complaining yeah, about? Get buddy? off your high horse there. Yeah. Pal. Yeah. Yeah. Jeez. They're We're just trying to be better. Yeah. They're not expecting you to do it. But, you know, a lot of times, you know, yeah. I feel like men, especially, they're just intimidated by, oh, my wife's going to get all, you know, get this new body and hang out with these new people and she's going to leave me and blah, blah, blah. But 
Cheryl's husband, he is my <laughs> type of guy. Opposite. He's the type of husband that uh-huh. she, like that I would expect uh, that that I would be. You know, I mean, yeah. obviously my wife's competed and I mm-hmm. coached her. And I, you know, I fully support that. But, sure. You know, and then she, he married her. Right, and then I <laughs> married her. But uh, Cheryl's husband, you know, pilot, super, you know, outgoing, mm-hmm. very. Um, high um energy big, big high energy big <laughs> big personality uh-huh. and he's like in for it man he's like i'll i will pay you to compete type yeah. of guy you know that's he did, awesome he did bribe me once yeah. did he really for one of the the yeah. competitions he bribed yeah. me to do bikini oh, wow. and i didn't want to do bikini because because mm-hmm. i'm not comfortable with the posing yeah. And okay. so yeah. I stuck with figure and then he told me he'd pay me a thousand dollars and I said sold. Yeah. <laughs> Done and it took deal. him four months to pay me and he paid me in a thousand ones. Paid her in <laughs> ones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But he it, it was interesting in the beginning. He didn't understand and I, I kind of felt like he was trying to sabotage me, like just little things he wanted me to eat with him because it's it's boring when you're competing those last three months, you know, you're not mm. having fun eating popcorn. But then he got on the bandwagon and he understood it. And now he's the extreme opposite. Like he thinks I can step on stage every day of the year. <laughs> Love <laughs> like, that. God no, honey, bless it him. doesn't it's quite work that, that way. Yeah, yes. I, I I have to watch what I eat mm-hmm. and I have to get to the gym a little more consistently. So now Cheryl has to balance her her lifestyle and food intake between the two Eric's. Yes. <laughs> yes. There's me. Oh, the husband. Yes, that husband is the, Eric. Uh, yes. That's, that's wonderful. The, hey, you need to track your stuff and stay <laughs> and then on there's track. Husband Eric, eat anything you want. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You're fine. Yeah, you're gonna be great. That's wonderful. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I think I I think it's a healthy balance. I mean, it's been wonderful. absolutely fun fun for me, sure. you know, being a part of the process, but. Cheryl, having oh you have both Eric's but your husband yes. Eric yes how has that been like to have that support through 13 shows and through the journey because oh, obviously it's not going to be easy every single time yeah so it, if you, it, what's what's it like having that support it yeah. took it took it took us a couple of shows to get into our groove and I, I learned what what makes him happy what keeps him sane and he learned what keeps me sane and mm-hmm. like like we drink alcohol and the first competition I didn't have a sip for four months so I didn't touch it and that was part of the reason I did it just to make sure I don't have a drinking problem make sure I could quit for four months <laughs> honestly two birds two we're birds. just kind of in the habit of you know having a glass of wine almost every night and then you just learn the process and you have to follow the process and trust the process and that's what he's taught me and mm-hmm. Even now, 13 competitions later, I'm like, isn't it time to diet down? Like those dimples <laughs> in the backside, they're back. And yeah. how do I get rid of them? And it's, it is a challenge to convince this lady to uh, eat enough calories and mm. not want to, you know, be stage lean all year round. I oh, okay. Say. Oh, yeah. I, yeah, I, could, I feel like that would be difficult. Like you, you got there. You worked so hard to get there. It's just like, can I just stay? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So how did you two meet? If you don't mind me asking. So where oh, did man. that how, how did I you think I think I know where we met. Um, I was at Emerald Cup. It was my second competition, okay. and that one's huge. Yeah. And it was early. It's April, and my true competition is June. This was just to experience it. I was not ready for it. It was kind of a horrible experience. Mm-hmm. And Christy oh, mm-hmm. introduced me to you, and oh, she yeah. talked about flexible dieting. I didn't really understand macros, and um, and she's like, "You really need to meet Eric." So we met. And that was it. And he kind of finished coaching me through the Bend competition, which was a month later, mm-hmm. and then the Boise competition that was June. Yeah. So and immediately we were like, yes, let's get together. Yeah. Let's do I kind of, I kind of had duo trainers. Won't say names, but I was really <laughs> listening to him. Okay. But finishing up because I'd already paid another, and then, um, then I was 100 percent with Eric, and that was that's awesome. Yeah. Seven years ago, I think. Twenty. So 14 was the very first one, and this was 2015. Yeah, it's probably 2015. Yeah, yeah mm-hmm. so like summer six, of 2015. Yeah, six and a half years ago, yeah. or five five and a half years ago, something like that. Anyway, yeah. it's it's been a, it's been a bit, yeah. But um, yeah, that was kind of there's uh, you and then Tina mm-hmm. and a few others. Anyways, um, had had kind of a not so great competing experience, and you know with you really don't know what to expect right as a first time competitor so this mm-hmm. this can be you know a lesson for those people who have you know thought about getting on stage before and you know it's a matter of a lot of people have some dude in their local gym yeah i've coached people before or you know mm-hmm. you just you, 
okay, right? You sign, you kind of sign up with anybody that'll, you know, kind of blow smoke up you and just get get to it. And you know, who are you to not believe them? You know nothing it, about exactly. Competing. Yeah, you wouldn't know if like they didn't and, know. And so then you, you know, you <laughs> even if you haven't had any experience with it, a lot of times people do understand when they've had a bad one. Um, and which is really unfortunate when that kind of all unfolds on show day, mm-hmm. you know, which has happened yeah. for, you know, a lot of my clients who didn't, didn't start out as my clients when they started competing, you know, they've been trained by other people and kind of either been left high and dry on competition day. Like they don't know what they're doing or what to eat or, you know, they kind of feel like they're helpless on show day. They've never done it before. And it's not like people need their hand held, but they need a plan. You know, mm-hmm. and so you know, and I, and I think, yeah. yeah, someone and, who would stick support, to that plan with you, like yeah. answer answer your phone calls and your messages, maybe you know that's useful. Um, but also just have a, a plan that you know all parties are are comfortable and confident with going going into a weekend. And you know, the fact of the matter is, a lot of coaches just that they they think they know, but they really don't know how to put a plan together. People have problems on show day. They end up looking worse. They, you know, they look better three days out. They, you know, or they're just, you know, confused. And the and last few days are so critical, and it's amazing yeah. what he sees. I don't see it. Uh-huh. Like, he'd be like, well, you need to do this. You need to up your carbs, or you need to drop down some fats. And and the, the change in that last week, I mean, I know they call it peak week, but still, it's amazing yeah. the difference between... A Monday and Saturday on stage. That's yeah. amazing because when I think of peak week as a kind of an outsider, it's just like your skin's getting tighter, getting more toned. Like, but there's a legitimate sh- like there's can be big changes. It's more so week. you know balancing the you know fluid and electrolyte and carbohydrate intake the week prior. You know, oh. and a lot of people expect magic. You know, peak week, and it's mm-hmm. not. I mean, it might appear like magic because, like she said, the the look can be drastically different, but. Mm-hmm. You know, really what it is is you're just optimizing where you're at in that current time. Like you're not going to, I mean, outside of the use of hardcore diuretics and steroids, things like that, you're not going to drastically. Which we don't do. Which, yeah, which we don't utilize. Um, You're not going to drastically change the amount of body fat that you have or anything like that. So you're more so getting the, the positives of peak week because you're, you know, filling out, um, you know, you're getting more glycogen on board, which is going to make, you know, more roundness. It's going to make the muscles look fuller. It's going to stretch the skin and you're getting rid of subcutaneous water retention. So, um, yeah, I mean, and all, all the factors kind of combined can certainly lead to a a drastic change in, in look. Plus, you know, you get tan on, you get all these things. Yeah. Yeah. You get, you know, your, your stage suit on, which mm-hmm. is typically, you know, looks the best on you. You get your hair and makeup and the whole nine. And it, figure, especially in figure and bikini, I will say, is like really dependent upon the whole package look, you know. I mean, it's not that bodybuilding is not, but you, you can kind of have a snaggle face when you're bodybuilding and still do well. <laughs> F- figure and bikini, it actually like you're your whole well-rounded look matters a lot. So when you put all the pieces together, it really makes a big difference. But Amazing. so it's helpful to have someone who knows all the pieces. Yes. To help to yes, put together. for yeah. sure. Yep, you gotta gotta know all the right right people to put in the right places. But I think you know one of the the big reasons why you are special and unique is in the kind of the second round of of shows that we were heading in to together we were kind of gearing up and getting ready for prep and then i got a a phone call from cheryl Mm -hmm. um that she's like well we my houston we might have a problem (laughs) and i you know i was basically i was like what's up Mm -hmm. and she you know tell tell us how that story unfolded it was about five years ago exactly almost to the day yeah okay (laughs) um I got diagnosed with breast cancer, which first found a lump, and they just thought it was, um, I forgot, sebaceous cyst, had that removed, and still, I wasn't worried at all. And then they came back and said, well, we need to, uh, no, then they came back and told me, "Um, well, it's cancerous. I'm like, excuse me, what? And the nurse actually told me. It was was day two of training for Orange Theory, and we had like, I think, four or five days of 
7 a.m. to 8 p.m. and like employee I said, training. Yeah, 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 just before we opened, and I, and I had scheduled my lumpectomy just before, right in time, or not lumpectomy, just the the cyst the, removal. The, oh, okay. But we thought so that I could be in training, and then and then it was eight in the morning, and I said, well, I. I can't really talk to the doctor. Can you just tell me? And she did over the phone, which I was kind of surprised about. Yeah. But I was also blown away. I was like, "What? I, I don't. I don't get a cold. I don't have cancer." Yeah. And it was it was a great workout that first workout because I was really mad, and I didn't get to tell <laughs> husband Eric until 11 p.m. Oh so I got to goodness, keep that to really? myself all day. I didn't want to tell him over the phone. Right. And yeah. uh, I called my father-in-law. He's an oncologist. Mm -hmm. Filled him in, and and he's like, "Okay, tell me exactly what they said." And I had a little corner of a piece of paper and it's like okay okay so anyway then um scheduled the lumpectomy for just before orange theory opened like we had three days where we shut down and got ready and told trainer eric and i we i had just done my best show i got yeah. my first first place yeah. in november wow. okay and then this happened november but i really found out in january mm -hmm. and i and i said so i don't know if i can continue training and he was sort of like i'm like Unless you think we could try. Yeah. And then I just kind of figured, why not? Mm -hmm. Why not? I was planning on doing a show in June. Yeah. And why not continue and give me something to focus on instead of poor me? And it wasn't bad. He, he acted like it was COVID. He sprayed everything down before I touched it. Do you remember that? <laughs> you had a spray bottle for everything. Oh, kept yeah. it really clean. Very oh, yeah. good. Yeah. And, That's um, great. And, and I think uh, I trained with him three times a week, and yeah. sometimes it was the mornings that I worked, and I would drive over here and take a quick nap in my car, <laughs> and then I'd train with him, and then I'd go home and take another nap, and then I'd do whatever. But yeah, it was it was kind of a crazy it was. experience. And it was yeah. through chemo, radiation, lost my hair. That's incredible. When you first found out, though, because we all know Cheryl, high energy, super fun, but obviously people who are like that, they usually tend to have bad experiences in their life where they know the difference between feeling really good and feeling really bad. But when you first like heard that and you're riding high, you just you got a first place finish, you're about to go into another round of shows, about to start an amazing new job. Did you have that moment of it's all over? No, no, That's no, awesome. but other people did. Okay. Like um, our, our, our head trainer at the time, he wasn't gonna put me on the schedule and I had been um, in pre-sales. I said, oh no, 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 I, I've got my schedule. Tuesday, Thursday mornings, those are mine. If I can't do it, then we'll reevaluate. Mm -hmm, right. And I scheduled my first chemo appointment for Thursday after work. So I had Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday to recuperate, feel better. Right. And I didn't tell them. And then yeah. after, when I taught the next Tuesday, I'm like, oh, by the way, I already had chemo. I'm fine. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it was, it was definitely interesting. When she told me, I was, you know, certainly on the fence because, you know, most people have the understanding that contest prep is not super easy on your body. Right. And you know, the way that, that I do contest prep is obviously as healthy as possible, but you know, you're pushing your body to get to a level of conditioning, a level of, you know, body fat that is not necessarily good for your immune system. It's, you know, and you're doing a lot of training, you're doing a lot of cardio. And so, you know, when Cheryl approached me about, stuff she's like you know we were kind of discussing whether like do we put this on pause you know what do we do and i'm like well you know we start a you know supplement regimen you know you can take things like creatine and glutamine and some others to really prevent muscle wasting during chemo and radiation right um but then you know she basically was like well i think i want to compete and I was <laughs> like, <laughs> wow, uh, you know, kind of long, I it was kind of long pause and cause I certainly didn't suggest that to her, but she's like, no, no, no. I think I, I think I still want to do it. And I'm like, you know, this woman's, you know, got an incredible amount of, mm -hmm. of energy and incredibly positive personality. Mm -hmm. You know, she's definitely driven and you know, who am I to tell her no, right? <laughs> I mean, she's got cancer, she's, you know, which is not a death sentence, no. but is certainly not an easy situation to deal with psychologically. I, I mean, I haven't had cancer, but I would imagine, you know, you get that news, what what were your thoughts? Um, a couple of different things is, is people think of it as like the C word, you, you know, other words that start with C, you don't say them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, I didn't want it to be like that. I didn't, I didn't want it to be a secret and I didn't want people to like whisper behind my back or feel uncomfortable. So 
once I decided to tell the world, I told the whole world and like posted on Facebook and I, I told my Orange Theory peeps, I said, by the way, this, and I yanked out a chunk of hair. I mean, oh it my was, gosh. <laughs> I said, this is going away. I said, I've got breast cancer, don't worry, it's fine, but I'm shaving my head this weekend. And then I put a wig on. <laughs> I wasn't even bald. <laughs> but I, you know, I, I, I treated it like it's a broken leg, let's get it fixed and move on. And luckily, that was my experience. Right. I mean, it was a very did positive you, experience. Did you have any super like low moments when you first found out? No, no, except for when I told husband Eric. I said the first night at 11 p.m. because our kids were, were, you know, they were middle school and elementary school then. And yeah. I got home. still young. Yeah. 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 And I got home from middle school and high school, I think. So I got home from um, work at like eight. He had dinner ready. The kids are all happy. Then he had to help Troy with his homework. And I'm just like, dude, dude we don't, we're not the couple that says, I need to talk to you. Right. You know, mm -hmm. if he said that to me, I'd be like, oh, what's wrong? Yeah. So I didn't want to say mean, that. Yeah. Okay. So finally, 11 o'clock, we go to bed and I said, well, I have something to tell you. <laughs> And then I told him, and then I said, I don't remember saying this. He told me, if I die, I've had a great life and I have no regrets. <laughs> <laughs> wow. But, and he just did homework with his son. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. Mean, he, that's, he's the one that reminded me. I said that. I'm like, I don't remember saying that. I mean, that's definitely a sign of somebody that doesn't have a lot of fear. Though. I was going to say, that's incredible. Yeah. Well, like, I, I, I meant that. I meant, like, we've had a great life. We've got great kids. That's and beautiful. I'm yeah. just turned 50. Yeah. No, 40. 40. No, no, I was 50. It was 26. No, 40. I was 49. 49. Yeah. And this was. I was 49. Yeah. I, it was my 48th, just before my 49th birthday. Yeah. Wow. But um, was I, it didn't, in I didn't January, really have. January of 2016? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And um, yes, because my 50th, we had a big party. And I was born on Friday the 13th. And I just wanted to party because my birthday was on Friday the 13th. And then just before the party, I had really dumb, dumb, curly hair. It was, oh. it was growing. It was awful. It was hideous. And it was, I didn't want the was party. It short? Oh, it was so short and yeah. curly. <laughs> it was like Shirley Temple. Off. Yeah. I looked like my, my sweet but older mother. I hated it. And I wanted <laughs> okay. to cancel the party. And that's a whole other story. And my girlfriend's like, no, no. And my daughter's like, dad's put a lot of work into this. It'll be fine. But yeah. um, anyway, uh, the hair grow back sucked, but there weren't any really bad days. I just took a lot of naps. I was tired. I, was I can a imagine. Lot more tired than normal. And radiation was just as exhausting, even though you're in there for, it takes you longer to change your clothes than it does to get zapped, but mm -hmm. it was tiring. So what about the process do you think helped, helped you through? Do you think the part of the process that really helped, was it just keeping with your normal schedule? Because, you know, from my point of view, I, f I feel like you didn't try to change a whole lot mm -mm. when when mm -mm. you found out. I feel like you really took it as just, you know, something else you had to do, but you're going to keep living your life. Yeah, for sure. For sure. I didn't I didn't feel like it was a death sentence. It was stage one. I never, never felt like that. I don't remember saying that to Eric. But, um, yeah, we just kept living our life, kept traveling. Um, Lily had lots of dance competitions. I kept working out. And I just felt like I would try to do a competition. I didn't know if I'd be able to. But mm -hmm. I said, well, let's just progress that way. It's January. The competition's not till May or June. I don't yeah, remember Beginning of June. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, um, and if you think I'm ready, the last minute I'll sign up. Wow. <laughs> and that was a plan. And it gave you something to focus on. Yeah. You know? well, that's true. Yeah. yeah. So the, the, for the both of you, when, when you found this out, and you already mentioned supplements and stuff like that, was there a lot of, was this like a hard a harder program to, to come up with for Cheryl and for uh, you guys to follow? I or? mean, in terms of like training protocols, mm -hmm. I would say protocols themselves, no, absolutely not. I, I mean, we tried to obviously keep it as quote unquote normal as possible. The big thing that you have to juggle, um, which is highly dependent upon the individual is, you know, fatigue level. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I'm sure there was a few days that she came in that she just didn't feel like doing anything, you know? And at that point, it was my job to be positive and to, be the cheerleader. To, yeah, <laughs> yeah, and be to the say, "Hey, for let's, the let's just do what you can." You know what I mean? There's you're here. Let's let's do something. You know, let's move. Let's and you know, most of the time it was fairly normal. It's it's more along the lines of, "Okay, well, you know, let's let's do a little bit less volume here," or "Oh, we're having a good day. Let's do let's do a little bit more. We'll do an extra set." You know what I mean? Things like oh. that. So it's. It was definitely more um, 
I would say fly by the seat of the pants un you know off program type of stuff even though there was you know there was definitely, definitely something program, to follow yeah. but right it was certainly you know kind of take it day by day and and it wasn't um, in it to win it it was it was get into competition ready where I don't make a fool out of myself on stage oh, okay yeah. and yeah. Sorry. So, were you like having fun doing it still? Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Good. It wasn't no, like one I of those things it. where I'm so tired. I'm just like I want to prove to myself I can do this, but it's gonna suck. No, I feel like I'm just as tired now as I was <laughs> then. You're <laughs> amazing. I'm that is amazing. A lot harder now. Mm -hmm. And as far as supplements, I I brought everything to my oncologist, and the only thing I wasn't allowed to take was vitamin C. Really? Yes. Yeah. Interesting. Because they're knocking down your immune system with chemo mm. to kill everything inside of you. Yeah. Oh, so you. But don't I never, it. I never got sick. I don't think I ever got a cold. No. But um, you came to the gym. Yeah. I mean, Eric sprayed stuff for you and everything, yeah. but yeah. still, yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah. it's amazing. I mean, sure. I mean, I mean, it lowers your immune system, but I mean. Yeah. Yeah, I, I it's think okay. that. Yeah, she did totally fine, and we definitely, you know, monitored her nutrition and and made changes and. Obviously, we wanted her to lose weight in a controlled fashion. You know, most people, when they're going through that process, they're trying to not lose weight just so that they maintain, you know, muscle right. mass and, mm -hmm. and things like that. But, you know, she was weight training, you know, three, three, four days a week at least and, you know, doing all the things. And, you know, from a physiological perspective, I think, you know, you, you did lose some muscle from going through that. Sure. Obviously, like you're anybody's going to, you know, you're essentially, you know, killing off your, the insides of you for, on purpose, yeah. right? Yeah. But, you know, it wasn't like she didn't look like a cancer patient at any point. The no. only reason you would have known is because she lost her hair, shaved her head, you right. know. But I didn't um, go out in public like that very often, yeah. <laughs> ever, yeah. ever, unless I just forgot it once. Uh -huh. Do you remember that? Yes. I was driving to him once uh -huh. in the middle, and, and all of a sudden I call him and go, oh! <gasps> I'm going to be late. I looked in the rearview mirror and I was just, they're bald. No <laughs> hair. <laughs> that would be so, it just sounds so interesting to me to just realize that, wait a second, I'm bald. It's, yeah, it's a little crazy. And, and as a female, honestly, yeah, vanity so plays a huge part. Yeah. That's the worst part. Yeah. The worst part. Mm. Yeah. You know, I think. Luckily the, it grew back. You, yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. As, you know, you sit here with your real hair. Yes. Thank God. Yes. But, <laughs> you know, I think that, um, and one of the big reasons why I wanted to have you on here was just because um, even though it seems like nothing to you, no, not nothing, but it seems like not a huge deal to you going through that, um, you know, most people, if they get a phone call like that you know it's not that they view it as a death sentence but man does it change them and you know i've seen so many people just go through struggles and and hard times with situations like that and they they fall out of the gym and they fall out of their routine and their life you know they kind of go into a dark place for a little bit of time you know and and i've seen a lot of those people come come back out of it and and you know, I'm not faulting anybody for, for having that happen, but with Cheryl, it was just so much different from others that I've seen get similar phone calls, go through similar situations. You know, she was so positive the whole time. Um, and like I said, she thinks it's, you know, no big deal or acts like it's not a, mm -hmm. a, a huge deal to have gone through. But you know, really, I think it certainly was kind of a special, unique situation, even though, you know, you're very, very much so a realist about the situation, right? Like you yeah. say, oh, it's stage one, like very matter of fact about things like that. I mean, it's still psychologically like a lot of people just, you know, crumble under situations like that. And right. she, you know, never, never did in front of me. She's always very, you know this is how it is. What do I need to do? Like, and, and still to this day, you know, and I think that people can really learn from, mm -hmm. from that approach. You know, people get very emotional with their decision makings and they get, you know, uh, you know, into a, a hard situation like that. And, you know, it psychologically messes with them more than anything. Mm -hmm. And I think with yeah. you, you, you just displayed, I mean, it's a lot of courage. It's a lot of, um, just fortitude and you just put, didn't let any of the negative thoughts in and just, I do think power of positive mind is huge, mm. huge yeah. 
for you, healing. Yeah, and is that more of like a, like there's day to day? Do you wake up and you have a mantra, or how does positive I don't, mind look but to I, you? I just uh, like always say things positive. I'm healthy. I'm. He I don't say I'm not going to get sick because then you have that negative not in there. Okay. And your brain hears I'm going to get sick, so I just say things like I'm. I'm healthy. I'm always going to be healthy. I'm always going to be fit. It's my plan, mm -hmm. and knock on wood, the plan sticks. Mm -hmm. And I, I like sharing my story because I probably met 15 people, maybe not even in person, that have been diagnosed with breast cancer in the last five years, and people call me all the time and say, can you talk to my friend? We watch you go through it. And if I can give back, that's the best thing ever. That's amazing. So what piece of advice would you give to, to somebody if they're listening and they find themselves in a similar situation? Um, I would say keep living your life for sure. Um, stay positive. Um, I think fitness helps in every way, like delivering a baby. I mean, Brittany delivered two. And I'm sure her being fit and ready yes, to go helps. She was incredible, yeah. Yeah, and I think that helps. I mean, you don't start a fitness regimen when you're diagnosed with cancer if you don't do it before, right. but right. just staying healthy, staying positive, living your life. Um, I unfortunately have a neighbor who did not have the same outcome as me, and she right. canceled a very big trip when she found out. In hindsight, she didn't know. Mm -hmm. You do everything you can to fight it, and like yeah. she didn't make it. But hers was completely different. But you, you need to live your life. Yeah. You know, you don't know when COVID's gonna hit you in the face, and you don't know yeah. right. Yeah, that's when, when a bus is gonna hit you. It's yeah. just so if you approach somebody who is struggling or stuck, what, what words of wisdom would, would you give them? You know, first I need to hear their story. I mean, it's easy to say, stay positive, go to the gym, you can do this, but right. I need to hear their story and see what it is that they're struggling with. Because right. um, you have to believe in yourself. I, mm -hmm. Like people ask all the time, what do you eat? Or what's your workout? And you have to want it to be successful. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I would give them lots of positive words of encouragement, but it would do, be dependent on what their struggles were, you know? Yeah. No, absolutely. That's fair, yeah. So what's the first thing when you think when you wake up in the morning? <laughs> what torture am I going to have to go through when I get to see Eric? Yeah, <laughs> that's the <that's> first <laughs> <Yes>. thought. <laughs> Practically. What have I got Practically, into? and it oh, never man. gets easier. Why oh. doesn't it ever get easier? Oh, such uh. a struggle. That just means you're, moving, you're, you're progressing is all, but I can imagine. That's yeah. right. That's right. Uh, so, okay, here's a different question for you. Okay. If you could have dinner with three people, dead or alive, who would they be oh. and why? That's so hard. Husband Eric asks that, and it's usually like uh, we have those dinner conversations sometimes, and I don't have a good answer. He'll have like, you know, I want to meet, I want to have a dinner conversation with Jesus. Or, with Jesus. Or Amen. If, if, don't if, we all? If Jesus is really there. Um, mm -hmm. Gosh, I don't know. I got, I had my, maybe my grandpa. He died when I was in first grade, so I didn't really get to know him very well. Um, that was a tough question. It, it is, is a tough That's question. tough because, like, inspiring people are, are still alive to me. I don't. Well, you can name somebody who's alive. Yeah. Um, well, I have dinner with my parents all the time. Yes. So I can't really count So who's, who's so this is not necessarily a, a question that we ask all the time, but who or what group of people would you say are like inspirational or do you follow or kind of lean towards for inspiration and advice? That could be your parents too, I yeah. suppose. But. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit my parents. Um, they're, they're 86 and 83 and they're still pretty active. Come to Orange Theory. They do, but- No way. Yeah, they've, they've been um, founding members that from day amazing. one, twice a week, faithful for five years until COVID. And then they actually um, went back good. in July. But good. Good job. they're 83 and 86. Yeah. And just with the way the world is, we kind of thought it'd be better if they stayed home. So I don't know if they'll be back, unfortunately. Yeah. That's a, that's amazing. I know. That, that's so cool. I know. To go they were our little token yeah. old people. It was so wow. cute. So cute. So cute. Especially my dad, eighty <laughs> six. So are you are you a reader? Um, I'm not a big reader. I read a little bit. I love a good book when I get a really good book, but it has to grab me and it takes a while. So I, what's your top three of all time? Would you oh, say? Oh, um, the power of one. 
Okay. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to name my first baby PK from that book. Loved it. And I just read um, uh, Where the Crawdads Sing, and it was such a great read and quick read. I loved it. And I, I heard that was a really good book. It is yeah. really good. I, I wish it was true. <laughs> It's not true, but it's really good. What's it about? Um, it's about a young girl who lives in a shack with her family. Okay. Her mom leaves. Her dad's a jerk. Uh -huh. Her siblings, as they get older, leave. And she's basically living by herself at about the age of 10. Oh, interesting. And then she ends up um, educating herself. Oh, wow. It's really good. Amazing. Really good. That is yeah. interesting. But, so it's, but it's fiction. It is. So, it is. But, I mean, there's stories out there, though. There is. I'm reading one, Educated. It's a little bit similar, mm -hmm. and it's a, a Mormon family who the dad doesn't believe in education, okay. and he believes in hoarding food, and um, mm -hmm. it's true. And um, somehow she does get educated. She's only about 10, and most of her siblings have left, mm -hmm. and she works in the scrapyard with her dad. But I know where it's going. Yeah, but I haven't amazing. gotten there yet. Amazing. Yeah, and for inspiration, I don't I don't follow a lot on social media only because I don't want to spend too much time on social media. But I do like all those inspira inspirational quotes and and stories. And of course, you inspire me, even though I hate you oh. when you're doing it. <laughs> and if I say I hate you, then you're doing your job. That's I'm, right. It's a I'm love pain. thing. It's a it's love. It's definitely thing, right? a love hate. That's right. For sure. <laughs> and and just. Trusting the process, it's taken me five years. I still have a hard time, <laughs> but it works. <laughs> so on the lighter side, top two movies. Oh, well, one of my favorites, sounds so cheesy, is Grease growing up. Oh, absolutely. I'm sorry, but Nothing I loved it. That. Nothing and I saw that. that at 10 years old, and I showed it to my daycare kids at 10 and realized this is so inappropriate. Oh, so inappropriate. <laughs> so I remember my, my sister yeah. wanted to watch it so bad, and my oh. mom was like, not yet, not yet, not yet. I had oh, no yeah. idea how inappropriate. And um, the other one is The Blind Side. I, I love all of those sports movies that okay. are true. Yeah. And my um, Eric's nephew played, he was a professional football player, and he played with the, oh, no the real blindside kid. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's but cool. I love all of those. That's just the first one I could think of the name of them. Yeah, Miracle. Great sports. That's the hockey Great. one, right? Yes, yes. Oh, absolutely. Yes. And, Great. you know. Um, a basketball guy, Saturday Glory Night. Road, was my show. I didn't see that one. Friday Night Lights oh, and yeah. that one. And then mm -hmm. the one where we are, we are the, it's Matthew McConaughey. The whole team goes down and then Marshall, we are Marshall. Yeah. Yeah. That was another great one too. Yeah, those are definitely good. Um, what is your top um, gym playlist right now? What do you what are you listening to? What when you put I the I listen in? to top forty. Oh yeah. Uh, so when I top, come here, it's not listening. your music. Yep. I like happy upbeat music. We have that some of the time. Some here. of the some time. Of the time yeah. Some of the time. It's like a I don't like mix hard here. rock. Hmm. I don't like rap for working out but even listening to mm. and i like happy music i mean music. Group, group fitness instructor yes. orange theory instructor yes. you would have to assume the yeah. you know pop up yes yes fast tempo the, the kind of music that makes you want to dance which you and Brittany always did oh goodness, yes we <laughs> they we dropped it low down in the car yes you they did. Yes. yes oh man what's your preferred uh training style and exercise method so if somebody's just like hey you get to go exercise today. What what would you do first at first jump? Um, well, if it, if it wasn't well, obviously I like to be tortured because I see you yes. a lot, and I can't do it on my own. I, I, I and that's why people are like, you know how to work out. Why do you need a trainer? And they're, even Orange Theory people are always surprised. I'm like, because that last rep and that rep before and probably that rep before I wouldn't have done if I was alone and I would never have gone that heavy. That's why trainers have jobs. Yes. Right. Yes. Uh, and uh, I, I'm a full believer I need it because I can't do it on my own. And or she I supplies it to, to others. Right. need it as well. I do. Uh, it's I do. It's pretty amazing. Yeah, if you think about it because if you walk in and just like Cheryl, she's a group fitness trainer. She looks incredible. She's been on stage 13 times. She's good. It's like, no, I need help too. Yeah. And everybody does. And I need to be reminded what to eat. Yeah, that's right. That's true. There's a lot more yeah, to it. There is. So here's a fun question. Who would play your character in a biography? <sighs> oh, yeah. That's a, that's a good question. That is a good question. Well, I know what my husband would say. What would your he husband would say? He would say Kate Blanchett. 
Because okay. he thinks okay. he thinks she I look like her. I don't think so. And she's she's very more like sophisticated and subdued. I need a little more hyper person. <laughs> I don't we know. More, we need a little more legally blonde mix. Yes, in there, yes, what you're saying? yes, yes. That's true. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's, okay. That's, that's a good quote. Like yeah. a, like a Jennifer Aniston type maybe. Yeah. You know? I thought well, who, when you said the Blind Side. Yeah. Uh, what was Sandra Bullock? Sandra Bullock came to mind. Oh, oh hey, there you go. Yeah, she and she was blonde in that. She's usually she was a brunette. Blonde in that. I think that's yeah. what. She's, yeah, that's she's the a connection good there. Girl next door, and she can play a good ditz. Yeah. <laughs> can play <a> good. <laughs> Miss Congeniality. Uh, Loved her in that. That was a great movie. Yeah. Yes. Well, this has been fun. I think I'm I'm out of questions. No, Cheryl, this has been incredible. Thank you for sharing your story. Sure. I know yeah. a lot Thanks of people, I know I was inspired. No, by I, uh, it's, it is really interesting because, you know, when you ask people to be on a podcast, I mean, some, some people we ask, you know, they've, they've been on podcasts before and they've done a lot of like speaking, public speaking, <laughs> stuff like that. <laughs> And, you know, some people, I, I think their story needs to be heard more often than not, you know, and that's kind of one of the things that, you know, we've really set out to do with this podcast is just exposing people to some of the incredible stories that you don't necessarily hear every day, you know, and people that you, you know, that you might not know about that have done incredible things because, you know, amazing things happen all the time and to, to seemingly ordinary people, right? Mm -hmm. You know, and a lot of people put, you know, those that are famous or have a large following kind of on a pedestal and like, well, they can do it because of fame or money or mm -hmm. what, whatever they, you know, they basically it's people just, you know, making excuses, you know, and ordinary guys like, you know, me and Hunter and ordinary gals, like I'm not saying you're ordinary because you're ordinary. certainly less an extraordinary ordinary you, you are <laughs> extraordinary and and we know that you're extraordinary but i think more people need to hear you know your story and and hear your advice because you're somebody who's definitely walked the walk for a long time and you've been through you know at, at least one extraordinary circumstance that i know of you know working through cancer competing in bodybuilding and i'm not saying everybody with cancer needs to no. <laughs> make it a goal to get on stage it's something she was already doing and had a passion for but you know i would certainly in you know invite people to to be more passionate in general and and explore their passions more like that no matter what so anyway i really appreciate you being on and Thanks. sharing your story and i'm excited for everybody to hear it thanks for asking me Thank you for joining us on the Power of Lifting podcast. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share. For more content like this, follow Eric Cafferty and The Mecca Gym on all social media platforms.